My name's Miles. Nice to meet you. I'm with the Arizona Vegetable Company, although I'm standing here at the University of Arizona. It's very flattering that you guys took both the time, energy, and money to come out here and listen to us speak, and hopefully you get everything that you're looking for, or at least most of it. Today is going to be kind of a soft day. Tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday will be a little bit stronger. Um, I want to introduce myself, talk a little bit about what we're going to do, introduce my lovely team. Uh, and then we'll do some a little bit of touring when it goes a little bit past solar noon so you guys don't walk outside and just get a melanoma. We're all here because at some level we all learn how to grow lettuce, herbs, in hydroponic systems in a controlled environment agriculture setting such as a greenhouse. Um, I'm here today to provide you the opportunity to mess around with some systems, see some different systems, and then we're going to talk about a lot of it. So hopefully you guys come from varying backgrounds, some pros, some beginning, and we'll have a nice mix. Um, I'm going to give you both technical information and financial information. So it's going to kind of run the whole gamut. We're not just going to talk about putting seeds in a cell. Uh, probably Monday or Tuesday we'll start breaking into the economics of it, although it'll sort of be an overlying concept throughout the whole course. We're all here for business at some level, so we need to think about how much it costs to do this stuff. We we'll talk about the greenhouse, the systems inside the greenhouse, not just the pond that we're going to be growing in or an NFT system, but also the fans, the glazing, lights, other, mechan or, excuse me, other mechanical equipment that goes on in the greenhouse that you will likely have to interact with at some level. Um, how to control it, or at least the set points that you should be working with, because there's a million different controllers out there to choose from. So I'm going to give you the set points at which you should see, excuse me, propagation and growing, pests and disease. We're going to talk about some financial information, as I had mentioned. Uh, a little bit about food safety, which is kind of a snoozer, but it's really important because we're all dealing with leafy green production, which is one of those topics that gets a lot of press when something goes wrong, like E. coli. Um, get the bad stuff out of the way. Uh, if you have to use a cell phone, Please don't use it in here. Uh, please do not text in here unless it's on silent. It just disturbs everybody else. You all paid a lot of money to be here. That means that everybody else did too. And so to prevent a fist fight from occurring, uh, please go outside and use your phone. Um, if you have a question, I hope you have lots of them. The last time we were able to record about 162 questions just sort of freely coming out in the middle of class. Um, please ask them, but if you can refrain from doing well, my operation has this specific problem, and I'd let you know. Save that for a little bit later. Try to keep things to generalities that would likely apply to the whole group, because people will get frustrated if you just try to talk about your operation the whole time. And it's not that we can't get to that. We have four days to talk. So just kind of pull me aside if you've got something very, very specific. The students will be recording questions that you guys ask. So um, ask me questions. Ask them questions. Sometimes we will not know the answer to everything, and that's the reason that they're recording it, is so that if we do not know something or it's a real long one, we're going to come back to it and answer for you later on and have to get back to you. But at least this way we know what you asked, which is super important. I'm Miles. I introduced myself. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, in case you can't immediately tell what's wrong with me. I came to the U of A twice. I did my undergraduate degree in agricultural technology management and then I did my master's degree here as well in the professional science master's program which is basically a master's of science and then an MBA smashed together to give me more of a uh, I guess a business perspective on the whole agricultural process or at least help me not to forget that that's involved in there so it's a very broad range I've got two companies I've got Verdant Earth Technologies which holds some intellectual property that I developed patent on a shipping container production growth system, which you guys have probably seen at some level somewhere. But today I'm here as the Arizona Vegetable Company, which is my production company, a research production company. Uh, so I'm not a U of A associate, or excuse me, I'm not a U of A agent. I'm my own independent person, just to be clear about that. It looks something like that. But that's for Verdant Earth which I want to advertise. That's my, that's my one slide of shameless advertisement for myself. And you'll never see it again. Um, I grow hydroponic vegetables. I've been doing so since about 2011. I graduated in 2009, took a year off, did a little bit of research here and there, decided to form my own company, which is what I speak to you today as. 
I'm a C Corp, or excuse me, I started as a C Corp and I'm now an S Corp. For some of you that might make sense, for some of you it doesn't mean anything. Basically it meant that when I started off I thought I was going to be the next Facebook of agriculture and I need to have an IPO ready to go. Um, didn't quite happen yet. And so I switched my corporation designation just based on tax purposes, but that's something we probably will not discuss. I sell to farmers markets, to restaurants, to small farmers, to some guy who wants to buy some lettuce from me randomly. I sell to different folks. I do not sell to Cisco or any of the large production, excuse me, large carriers yet. That's something I'm aspiring to, but I'm just not there yet for a variety of reasons, which we'll talk about. I started off in a 2,600 square foot Quonset style greenhouse, which we'll point out at some point this weekend. Um, I'm in a different set of greenhouses now. It's kind of musical greenhouses out here. So they shift me from site to site, and then they let me see if I can actually succeed in a different environment, which doesn't always happen. You'd think that it would be the same result from greenhouse to greenhouse, even at the same location, but it's not always the case. I specialize in deep flow hydroponic technologies. I've worked with all the systems, but deep flow is where I came back to because it fits what I'm doing here for my production system and what I'd like to grow. Uh, it's not that I won't get into other systems, but this is what we happen to have. But we'll see other systems today. Lettuces, greens, herbs, vegetable transplants, and flower transplants. And then consulting is kind of primarily what this company does. If you want to get a hold of me, here's my email address. Lettuce at Arizona, dot, excuse me, lettuce at Arizona Vegetable Company dot com. I used to work here though. Um, I decided to defect and go off and try to be an entrepreneur, but I used to be a research technician here. And so I worked with Dr. Cherry Kubota, who you all may or may not know of. Um, she's a resident faculty here. She studies plant physiology. She works on strawberries, tomato grafting, melon grafting, cucurbit grafting in general. Uh, and so we worked on a USDA grant where we did an economic analysis of tomato grafting. And that was a published paper, which if you want a copy, I'm happy to provide that. I can legally provide that one to you. And basically it said, hey, use this equipment, don't use this equipment. Here's kind of the economics of how it's going to work and why you might want to consider one way or the other. And it was for both large and small scenarios. So I've, I've got economic analysis kind of under my belt as well as just production. I don't know who that hippie is. Um, the guy in the middle is Dr. Gene Giac Giacomelli, who's sitting there in the corner in the back. Raise your hand, Dr. G. Thank you. He's the director of the Controlled Environment Agriculture Center, so El Jefe. So anything bad that goes wrong, you tell him. Good stuff, you tell me. Um, Dr. Rorba on the right-hand side, she was the original faculty member who was operating the tomato greenhouse, the teaching greenhouse, which some of you know of. If you came to the tomato intensive course, or if you will be coming to the April short course, you'll see her, and you also see her old greenhouse, which We'll also see this week. Um, I'd like to introduce my team. Sean Fleck was unable to be, we had a variety of issues. Uh, Sean Fleck, Christian Gomez, and Ruth Price, three of them will not be here for family, vacation, spring break. They want to make a bean burrito at home and not be here, whatever. Um, but what we do have is Kelsey Humber, who is an actual employee of my company. She is a graduated plant science student, so she's got a bachelor's degree in plant sciences from the University of Arizona. She's got two or three years experience managing the tomato greenhouse, so she's got a lot of good experience at the managerial level, not only as just the peon who had to do the clipping and pruning. Um, she also works at another farm, so she's kind of a free agent right now helping us out, but she also works for our competitor. Um, but she's a very good person to ask questions to. She's got a lot of tomato experience. Brian Kaplan here. He's a graduate student in Ag Biosystems Engineering. He comes from Pittsburgh. I think I always mix him up. Um, I believe your undergraduate degree was in economics? Right. Applied mathematics. Numbers. We call him numbers. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but he's a very talented grower. He started here with very little experience in CEA. and. Like within a semester, the kid rose the rank. So I was pretty impressed with his performance. So lots of talent right there. 
Dan Gillespie is a graduating senior. Uh, he has his resume somewhere. Yeah, Dan's gonna have his resume out because this is some professional development for Dan a little bit. But Dan will be graduating soon. He will also have a bachelor's degree in plant science. He's got a very good background. He did an internship at Longwood Gardens. Longwood Gardens, if you guys know that, very prestigious internship. And then he's been working with me on strawberries and lettuce and then transplant production for about the last eight, nine months. So we're very happy to have the three here. Austin, you know of already. And the other guys aren't here to defend themselves, so we're not going to talk about them. Um, despite how it might sound, I'm not a CPA. I am not a lawyer. I am not an attorney. Um, this course is for entertainment and informational purposes only. Um, there's generally one lawyer in the crowd. Is anyone an attorney here? It's okay to admit it. You're not, are you? Okay. You got that smile like, yeah, I know. There's always one, so I'm just curious who it is. Um, it's always a nice thing to have because the legal side of this is something that you don't often consider. Is that thing sucking up heavy metals when we're eating it? There's a lawyer in the room, isn't there? So that's why I ask. Um, you guys have access to the Google Drive. Normally we pass it out on a USB drive, but it's all thanks to Austin Online. So if you printed stuff, good. If you didn't, tell him. But that's a library of information based upon my personal experiences building up my own business. So it's a plethora of stuff, but you're still going to have homework to do because, again, I described the greenhouse outside being different from the one across the street. It's going to be different from what you see here today compared to where you are when you go back home. So you're going to have some homework and some tinkering to do. So it's not an all-in, push, go, and everything will be honky-dory. So just please keep that in the back of your mind. We cover a lot, but we cannot cover everything. So there will sometimes be a topic that you'd like covered, which we try to add it on every time. Previously, we had two days to do this course, and we always ran out of time. And we had three. We still ran out of time. So now we're at four this week. So hopefully we've added enough time to get all the topics covered without too much slack. Um, no guarantees in life. The most frustrating answer I'm gonna give you guys, which I'm gonna warn you now is, it depends. Um, that's a very common answer in agriculture and plant sciences and engineering. Uh, less so in engineering, but more so plant sciences. We're dealing with a biological system, plants, insects, fungi. And so while we can predict how they're gonna behave, and there's always one or two percent of them that kind of go off and do their own thing. So it's not always going to be universally applicable. And then please keep an open mind. Um, ask questions. Uh, but have a little bit of patience because we do have a ton to cover and uh, we're going to do our best. I hope you all brought sunglasses and or a hat. Um, if you didn't, bring one tomorrow. Uh, we'll go outside. This is Arizona, so it's really warm and bright. Um, you might want some sunscreen, just throwing it out there. We'll be in the greenhouse at different times of the day. I want you guys to experience it morning, noon, and night so that you get a feel of how it will change throughout the day. There will be reason behind that, and you'll be happy you did it. Although you might sweat a little bit, it'll still be a good thing. Um, obviously, watch your step. This is a farm. Um, we're going to be going into greenhouses with live, active research projects, inclusive of Dan in the room, but not including other green, uh, graduate students who are not present today. So we have to be super respectful of their work because this is a PhD candidate or master's candidates whose work we're going to be able to interact with. So please don't touch it, refrain from, you know, banging it around or tripping or otherwise messing it up. We can look, but just can't touch the merchandise. Not only the research element, but this might be food that you guys consume in the next couple days because we're going to try to make a salad out of some of the stuff that we grew for you. Um, but also other people eat this stuff outside. We do sell some of this stuff off to cover the cost of research occasionally. So there will be the general public eating this stuff. So if you could refrain from sneezing all over the lettuce, you'll be doing us a solid. Um, plant hygienics. If you guys smoke, chew, dip, cigars, any form of tobacco use in general, Please refrain from touching the plants. Lettuce is more okay, but if you touch a tomato or a pepper or other solanaceous plants, you could transfer a disease to them, tobacco mosaic virus, and it's easily transmittable even across a processed cigarette. I'm a tobacco user. I'm sorry, but still, I wash my hands. Yeah, I know, right? Thanks, Mom. 
Um, I wash my hands. Soap and water doesn't always do it though. Um, so just please do not touch our plants if it's a tomato, pepper, melon, stuff like that. Um, I want to get to know you guys and why you're here actually. And then we'll go outside and do some various activities. Um, the schedule is subject to change, but that's just sort of so that I can accommodate you guys because my guess is that there's going to be someone who's got relatively little experience and there's someone out there who's already a pro and then everything in between. So we just have to work around that. We're going to go around the room super awkwardly, just like in grade school, and I'm going to point at you and ask you a series of questions that, so that we can get an idea of where you're from, why you're here, so on and so forth. So as I come around, think about where you come from. That's an easy one. Uh, what kind of experience do you have? Have you already grown in a greenhouse? Do you have a greenhouse actively? Are you transitioning into greenhouses from the field? What's your relative little level of experience? Um, why are you in this class? What do you want to take away from it? Are you here just to gain knowledge because you work at Link 4? Sorry, I get to point at her because I know her. Um, are you starting your own business? Do you need some specific nugget of information to go back to your company to succeed or change something? We've had every level of that come through. Um, what's the big question you're here for? Small question you're here for? Yada, 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 yada. So, mom? Dr. G, you want to introduce yourself? Please. The boss wants to come up, he's sitting and say yes. I want to welcome everybody here, and, and I'm really pleased to see the, the uh, at least two people from Arizona are here. That's, that's kind of nice. To everybody else, welcome. Um, and uh, come back in May and June, and you'll see the relative difference of cold versus hot from PEI. I, I used to be on the East Coast, so I appreciate cold winters, and that's why I'm here now, because I appreciate hot summers. Um, I am the director of the center here. My background is in engineering. Actually, I'm in the Agricultural Biosystems Engineering Department, but my background includes a lot of study in crop production, and I became enamored with greenhouses a long time ago because of what you could do to grow a crop, particularly with hydroponics. Um, this is one aspect of what we do at the center here. We, we have research activities going on to learn more things, and Miles will be showing you a little bit of that along the way, uh, because of some of the visits at the very least. He'll be giving you information that, that he's learned along the way here, that we've all learned um, in, in production, of course. We also have regular programs for undergraduates, and we have these programs for those who are not in the time frame of needing a degree, uh, a piece of paper to get your career started. You, you have careers already, or you're, you're coming back to learn more, um, and and this is very important to to us to get the information out. So therefore, what we've been doing is teaming up. And um, although Miles he introduced himself very well as an independent um, uh, businessman and with expertise and and and, and uh, background, but we team up with a contractual agreement that he teaches this course. And we provide some of the infrastructure, and but he takes all the headaches. So, uh, and what you'll see with he and his the, the students, which are in part from our program and other programs here on campus, um, they have set up the greenhouse, and it should look perfect, and clean and neat and organized, and nothing out of order. Well, not exactly. It is a biological system, so uh, we got to keep that up. That in mind, but it, it is a, a good looking uh, greenhouse, and I think we may have found one that we're going to keep you in for hopefully a long time. We'd like to continue this course on a regular basis, and uh, we appreciate, appreciate your support in that. Um, I'll emphasize one last thing I will be around uh, on occasion here, there, uh, through the next four days, uh, but not necessarily sitting in the back. So if something comes up uh, engineering specific that uh, you want to talk about? Be glad to to talk to you about that. And um, you're here for a reason. You paid darn good money to be here. And we appreciate that. It keeps us going. Ask those questions. Get the answers that you want. But learn collectively. 
because you're all going to have the same challenges or very similar challenges. Whether you're inside a vertical farm, whether you're in a greenhouse, you still have to provide what the plant needs to grow. And if you don't understand what that is, and if you don't understand how to make it happen, then that becomes a, a challenge. You become experimenting yourself. Let us have done the experiment for you. Learn from the experience that are, that are here. And get some hands on, get your fingers a little bit, a little bit dirty. Well, we don't say dirty. What do we say? Um, a little bit wet. It's dirty. Wet. Hydroponics. This is not a dry job. No, no, it's not. Anyway, enjoy yourself and have, have a good uh, event. Good Thank you. Thanks. Um, all right, we all know each other, sort of. I thought if I'm collected enough myself, I brought this with me. Bazing. Uh, there's the scheduled program. I'm from LA, so there's going to be some Hollywood kind of interfering with it. It just it, it just happens. Um, we've got some planned events. I think I've got a good idea roughly what level you guys are at. There's some experts in here. And then a lot of us are kind of just beginning again or just starting. So I think I know where we're at. Um, there's going to be some unscheduled things. And it's, kind of be, it's going to be based upon your interests. So, for example, we've got the vertical farm, which is going to be a tiered system. It's not in production. They're still putting it together. But we can peek through the window. We can see how it's set up. We can see the lights, the graphical user interface, and all the equipment associated with that. If the vertical farm or indoor farming would be of interest, raise your hand. That half of you. All right, sorry guys, critical mass. Um, so we're gonna go look at that. If you don't like it, we'll have a smoke break. Um, the aquaponics house, I know that's totally uninteresting to you, but aquaponics. So we have an aquaponics site here. Uh, there's gonna be a fish side, and then the, is it completely running or is the other side still chemical? It's on, it's on inorganic. It's on inorganic? Okay. Well, we can still show you the fish production system and we can show you the other side when it will be coming in. So aquaponics, eh, okay, critical enough mass. Um, another one is we'll be looking at Dr. Giacomelli's project, the Lunar Greenhouse, or oh, is it OTM or LGH? Mars Lunar the Mars Lunar Greenhouse, well, excuse me. Mars <laughs> yeah, what's up? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah interest, yeah. So going across the street and looking at the Mars Lunar Greenhouse, which is representative of a vertical farm, but just single layer. All right, cool. We'll do that too. All right. Those are the three big ones. Um, not everybody always wants to do that. Last time we had a pretty aquaponics heavy one, and some people didn't really care for that. So, all right, good. These are all the questions that were asked the last time. So I just thought I'd run over some of them so you get an idea of what was asked the last time around. These are the top 90 questions that I got. I'm just kidding. Um, do you need to sanitize water for your wet wall? Probably. That'd be a good idea. I'm picking the ones that are really easy that are kind of yes and no. Um, think in the back of your mind if these are some of the questions you came with. Uh, where does the excess nutrient water go? Well, I can recycle it, which we'll talk about. But right now, I drained a waste, which means it goes in, the plant uses it, and then it goes out. That's pretty common in a lot of greenhouse setups. So drain to waste, that's a term you should probably get used to. And it just means you're using the fertilizer once. Uh, why aren't there many greenhouses in the southeast? Well, my guess, which is just a guess, is that evaporative cooling, which is a dominant cooling technology associated with hydroponics and greenhouses, that's really tough to operate in a very humid environment like the southeast. That's probably why you don't see a ton of them there. They're more these open structures. So just remember, if you have evaporative cooling or a wet wall, or also known as a swamp cooler, when you get high humidity, it just goes down and stops working on you. Will stressing the lettuce affect taste? Yes, it will. We're going to talk about stressing lettuce a little bit, but that's kind of one of those experiments which you can go home and talk or experiment with yourself. Joelle, and you grew it to like, what, 6.0 or something like that? Or? Yeah. 
did it affect the taste at all? There you go. Char terrible. Can playing music improve plant growth? We get some funny questions. Those, these are okay. These are good questions. We like this. My official answer is no. If I sit there and play Metallica to my plants, they're not going to grow any better. They're not going to sit there and start doing this. They're just going to sit there and grow just as well. But that's one of these kind of new research things that they're looking at because it's entirely possible that music does have an effect on plant growth. If I have a plant sitting there perfectly still by itself and then I have one in the same environment but with a speaker, there's sound energy waves hitting the plant and that could possibly affect it somehow. We're not there yet though. If it affects the grow, it could be positive. But if I don't listen to Metallica in the morning when I'm dealing with my plants, the plants are going to suffer. No, I'm just kidding. Um, actually, this is a good one. Is there data on how nutrient levels change from harvest to consumption? I'm sure there is somewhere. There's going to be a lot of questions like, do you have data on topic? Sometimes I don't. And sometimes, and actually I shouldn't say sometimes, in a lot of cases, the data that does exist, which we know it exists, you sit there and you say, there's no way that in this world we've got all this technology, but this nugget of information doesn't exist. It's just it's often retained by a corporation, and they don't want to let it out because it's intellectual property. So there's some stuff which we just don't know yet because we haven't had the opportunity as a public institution to research it and then put it out there for you guys, which is kind of the purpose of what I do. I'm trying to level the play, playing field in some senses because I'm going to give you all the answers that I know of, uh, which probably some of the guys at the bigger corporations don't want you to have, such as a nutrient solution recipe. If I had to pick one piece of information that people want when they come here, it's the nutrient solution recipe. How many grams of X do I need to add to the water to get my fertilizer solution? As opposed to going to the store and buying the off-the-shelf bottles of things, Advanced Nutrients A, Greenhouse A, B, C, Veg A, Bloom B, all these other things. We don't want that anymore. We want to make our own, and so we give that piece of information out. It's literally the $100,000 piece of information for some operations. We've had people, we've been doing this now since 2012. I looked it up. Um, people have come in here literally just for that one piece of paper, seven lines. That's all they wanted out of here, and they were willing to cough up $1,000 to sit there and just hear that one piece of information. So we're giving away something valuable, apparently. Will LED light prices decrease? Absolutely. Um, I'm very confident in LED technology that as it develops, the price is going to go down. It's just economics. So we're kind of at this beginning stage of things where everything's super expensive because the early adopters are kind of having to take the brunt of buying all this stuff and developing the technology. Eventually, it's going to hit the middle of the bell curve and then go to the other side, and then the prices will decrease and will be more available to the general public. Why is GIPGAP, good handling practices, good agricultural practices, the food safety program, why is it not mandatory? Well, it's not mandatory yet because we haven't had enough food safety incidents yet to make it mandatory. It's only a mass poisoning of people from a Taco Bell truck or the lettuce field away from becoming something that is federally and or state mandated for us to do. Right now it's voluntary. But it will come one day, and so it depends on us as growers and the producers how quick that comes. If we maintain great food safety standards and good production systems, it slows a lot of this regulatory stuff that we're ultimately going to have to get into. What else? Gip gap, food safety. Good handling practices, good agricultural practices. We're going to talk about it so much you're going to be face down in your, in your plate. Uh, can I sanitize the nutrient solution after prolonged use? Absolutely. We'll talk about that. I'm going to talk about concepts such as sterilization. I'm going to discuss pieces of equipment, which some of which we don't have. We don't have an ozone generator on site, unfortunately, to show you, but it's still a viable technology that we'll discuss. So again, some of you guys are going to be going into a larger scale type of production system where you're going to be using these pieces of equipment that we're just not able to show you, but we'll at least allude to it so you know what they are. What else can I tell you? But anyway, if you care to look through the questions, I'll leave this up here, but we're hoping to add to this two or threefold from the questions that you guys get. Remember, record the questions.
for the questions. Before the questions. Um, because it's really important. This gives us kind of a frequently asked question database, which doesn't really exist. Because we've seen the same thing repeat a few times throughout the courses. So it's nice if we could sit there and have this document ahead of time that you can all read. It helps us shape this course a little bit better. On that note, please do send reviews afterwards. I believe Austin, wherever he went, will be passing out a review or we'll do a survey monkey. Please fill it out. Negative, positive, indifferent, it still helps me. You can't fire me, but you can help me a lot. Um, I really hope you do. It's, I've had negative comments before which have helped me positively shape this course. I tuck my shirt in now. I swear a lot less. We removed some topics. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it was nice because I know sometimes that I went too in-depth on something. I didn't go in-depth enough, or I completely over, I missed a topic. Remember, I've been doing this since 2002 approximately I've been messing around with hydroponics tomatoes lettuce roses other things so to me this is all second nature in the back of my mind so sometimes I miss something that might not be second nature so please just ask I think we can walk around for a little bit you guys want to go outside and kind of get in the mood of it all do you have a question okay no it's okay here we're breaking into it I'm getting to know all of you guys um, we'll walk around, just remember, live greenhouses, live projects, food safety, try not to touch too many things, ask a lot of questions. Dr. G's got one. Do it right now. Um, there's, there's an order to how we go through greenhouses. Um, I'm not going to go take out the trash first and then go cook you dinner. I'm going to cook you dinner and then take the trash out afterwards. So kind of the same type of thing. I'm going to go from clean places to dirty places. I don't want to go from dirty to clean because I'm just dragging things around and I'm acting as the vector at that point. The vector being the thing that's carrying around disease and passing it from place to place. So since ours happens to be the cleanest, we'll go in there first for just five minutes so you can look at it. And then we'll look around at some of these other greenhouses, talk about things you might consider when buying a greenhouse. We're going to tap on some of the materials. Um, is it okay if I use your traveling road show of materials, Dr. G? Okay, cool. So we'll have some stuff where we don't actually have to sit there and you know start tapping on the greenhouse all the time. We've got some samples we can pass out. And then we'll come back in. You guys want to take five minutes to get some water, go to the restroom, throw a tomato at me, and then we'll go outside? Well, it's lettuce. It's lettuce. It's softer. <laughs> 